our bus is completely stuck in the sand. We're about two kilometers from Kauhuchi, we're about 15 kilometers from the main road. So whatever happens, we've got a serious amount of walking or pushing to do. So we're here at the Kahuchi Pyramids, um, just outside of Nazca. Said to be built around 500 AD uh, by the Paracas culture. And then it was in use for potentially a thousand years and taken over, uh, we're not sure how or why, by the Nazca culture, those who uh, designed and laid out the Nazca lions and effigies. There is water, uh, a valley of water around here. Um, and it was around 500 AD that that kind of dried up and there was uh, big changes in the climate which caused uh, the downfall of the civilization who was here. However, they've left the largest uh, adobe pyramid complex in Peru and possibly the world for us to visit here. Um, it's not officially on the tourist route. You have to go down an 18 kilometer dirt track and we actually got stuck in the bus and we had to dig it out on the way here. So it's quite a treacherous trip, but definitely one for those who want to get off the beaten track and see some amazing sights, especially in this part of coastal Peru. So what we find all over the coast of Peru from the very north to the very south and inland, like where we are at Cahuachi, say 40 miles, is pyramid construction or pyramidal construction. Ceremonial temples, some of them the size of hills, but they're so heavily eroded now because most have been abandoned for a minimum of a thousand years, some 2,000 years, that all you see are these bare hillsides, but they were multi-level ceremonial temples, colored as well. Red buildings representing the sun, white buildings representing the moon, and other ones which were yellow, pink, and orange. One of the most amazing things about this, um, this pyramid complex is not only the vast scale of it, but it's also the fact that on the way here, as we were driving down uh, the actual sort of track that gets you here, you can actually see many looted graves and even skulls and bits of clothing and ceremonial grave goods still in situ. So even today it hasn't been properly excavated so there could be much more to be discovered here. So let's go and take a look and see what we can find up at the pyramid. They make, he said ceremonies more likely another connection to another side. Uh -huh. So they were connected to one to another. Well, there, there were also labyrinths too, because uh -huh, we see that at other, in, even Inca sites, that there's a whole labyrinth system and it, it's easy to get lost in them today. Mm -hmm. So again, what you're looking at is the original. And there in the landscape, this landscape, this is all, this is all pyramids. Yeah, all the things that we can see are just... 36 pyramids. 36 pyramids in this area, as well as across the river, there's a sun temple. The biggest one, he said. This is oh, this biggest. is, yeah. yeah. He wants to see where they store the water. <laughs> so, what have you found up here, Glenn? Uh, at the moment, I'm just tuning in to try and tune into the frequency or the particular type of energy. There is, um, it seems like there's the start of a spiral here, so I think there's an upwelling of energy at this point. As we walked up this path, I was finding bands uh, across it, first of all down the bottom about every five paces, and as we came up they got closer and closer until just here, about 20 yards away on, on the right, the, the rise of the, the path here is where the bands became the closest and so I'm trying to now see if those are spirals from this energy center or if they're something else at the moment I don't know the energy from there seems to be spiraling out all across here so just to explain that so that hill there that small lump is like some kind of um, probably ceremonial hilltop or whatever and then that spirals and it kind of goes behind you here is that correct yeah. into some lines here 
it out to here. And you okay. were picking up the energy well, there, weren't you, I and Chris? Was, I was picking up that the energy hot spot of this area anyway is definitely on top of this little mound here. But that was for energy. And then down to the left, there was a big band of water energy that was running across there. And I think even behind, and Chris is over there mapping it out right now. So we should be able to see a lot more later. This is a beautiful complex. Yes, fascinating site, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this looks like a power center, and there seems to be a large energy band, a negative energy band coming through the, uh, the top of the mound in this direction. It's about, uh, what is it, 23 meters wide, but it's got 13 um, bands within it. And there's a positive energy comes up in this direction and that going off in that direction and they cross here and that's so there's uh, a crossing point, a crossing point. That's, that's why it's a hot spot yeah and that's 15 meters wide and about 10, 10 bands so that's a positive energy and that's the negative energy or the yin and the yang yeah and they meet here so this is i mean it really yeah. makes you feel a bit fuzzy doesn't it uh, i can feel it and what's interesting about that as well these storage chambers which we're told were for storing grain yes, they're um, highly magnetized highly yeah magnetized so water. i think yeah. not only would the grain be stored it, it, and, and preserved but it would probably also be potentized along the lines of john yeah, burke's to, work to, to at sacred sites right. so they knew or they possibly knew that storing the grain here would preserve it and potentize it fantastic so what you were picking <laughs> up coming up the track there was probably the the part of the spiral spiral vortex yes yeah and it'll have a whole lot of radials as well radial oh, yeah. paddles going out in all directions so we could douse those as well and make it come up with a big um a big manifestation, manifestation if you wanted a big petal mm. manifestation but <laughs> <laughs> so we just need time to do it yeah here's a band so we are finding some quite interesting energy features here uh, to do with earth energy and underground water both Chris Glenn and Cameron um, have been dowsing here to see what's been found as uh, as part of Glenn's research he's noticed that the, probably the main spot energy spot is kind of what we looked at first on the way in and it's a bit lesser up at the main pyramid so and that could even be a spot uh, where there are holes in the ground where they kept their food or seeds or grains or whatever it was actually used as Glenn rightly pointed out and based on John Burke's incredible research that uh, they could have been charging up the grains of some kind of magnetic energy, natural earth energy and underground water and other such features which could enhance the seeds and grains so they could quite easily use this whole area uh, to survive in um, and to grow crops and they've obviously got the water sources as well so although it looks very desert like today and arid back a couple of thousand years it was probably an abundant flourishing uh, kind of savannah so um, it's quite different now to what it was a couple of thousand years ago. It's great that they're really starting to uncover the site to find out what's really going on back here, uh, all that way back in prehistory.